Ah, there we go. Hello, people. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm going to wave at you because I can click the wave button. Hello. Um, last week, some of you commented on my axe. Um, during the video, I had an axe, and this is that same axe. So uh, in answer to some of your questions, I thought I would tell you a little bit about my axe. So this is actually what well, was my dad's, my dad's uh, hatchet axe, and it's about 30 years old, and it smells lovely. You see, the reason this smells lovely, and looks so shiny, look, isn't that nice, isn't it shiny? The reason, the reason I love this axe is because I've just spent the last few days restoring this. Sorry, if you've just tuned on and you're wondering what Tim's doing with his axe, I'm explaining the axe, don't worry. And I really want to make sure I don't drop this because my laptop is right here and that will be bad for everybody. Um, but I spent the last few days restoring this. Last week, this axe was disgusting. It was covered in rust, the handle was rotting, uh, it wasn't fitting right, it smelt, um, you couldn't touch it, it wouldn't cut anything, it wasn't sharp. Now it's very sharp. And I've restored this. Isn't it, isn't it lovely? Isn't it nice? And so, <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my chain of thought. That was awkward. Um, what I've done is I've sanded off all the rust. I filed it and I used wire wool and I used sandpaper. I used a uh, ceramic sharpening block, a DC4. Um, I use only hand tools and then I've given it three different coats of linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, which has just come up lovely. Look, isn't it nice? And it's shiny now. I can see my face in this. And this is what they call shaving sharp. I'm not going to do it because I quite like my uh, lockdown beard. Um, but I could drop this down my face and it would shave off my, my sideburns, which maybe, maybe that's not a bite. I could dig a bit from down here. Oh, ow. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but that is Tim Chin Hair. And I thought this is a really good illustration because um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel a little bit like this axe was. I feel rusty and grouty. Is grouty a word? I don't know. But I feel mucky. I feel dirty. I don't feel strong. I don't feel like I work very well. I don't feel like I function very well. And I feel a little bit like this axe was. And I thought, what a great illustration for the Christian story. Because what God does is God looks at us a little bit like I looked at this dirty old axe. and said, it doesn't matter how, grub, how, how grimy you are, how grubby you get. It doesn't matter how little you think you work. I can... I can work with that. And so what God does is actually he cleans us up. He grinds off all the grit and he puts a lot of effort into it. This took a lot of effort. I didn't use any power tools. He puts a lot of effort into it. And he, he cleans us up and makes us all, uh, makes us work again. And what's lovely is it makes us all shiny again. And the story of Christianity is this, that God looked at us covered in our muck and went, I can do something about that. Sent Jesus to the world. Jesus did all that hard work. He died on a cross in our place and cleaned us up. And what he does now is he makes us shine. He makes us reflective. He makes us like a mirror so we can actually reflect him to a broken and grubby world that also need him. So my question is, have you had that restoration on your own life? Have you actually said to God, do you know what? I feel a little bit like Tim's dad's old axe. And I feel like I don't really work very well. I feel like I, I'm a bit grubby, a bit dirty. I've done some things in my life that I'm not proud of. And I, I feel like, God, you don't, you couldn't like me. But, but you know, Tim says that maybe you'd be up for cleaning me up too. So have you asked God that? Have you asked God to come into your life, life and clean you up a little bit? I want to read you a verse in the Bible. This is from Romans, book right at the end of the Bible called Romans. Um, Chapter five, and it says verse, verse six right here, the little verse six. You see, it says, at just the right time when we were powerless, we were rubbish, effective, not working properly. Jesus died for us, died for the ungodly, the grubby. It says, very rarely will anyone die, even for a righteous, a good person. So for a very good person, someone might possibly dare to die. So you might die for someone, maybe, if you absolutely must, and you're a brilliant good person, they're a good person, maybe, but it's rare. But then it says this, God demonstrates his own love for us, God's love in this. 
when we were still sinners, when we were still covered in rust and muck, when we were rotting, when we were sinners, Jesus died for us. So that means God didn't say, look, when you behave yourself, I'll come and be with you. When you get your life sorted, then I'll come and be with you. When you clean yourself up, I'll do some work on you. He says, Nana, when you were sinners, when you were covered in all that rubbish, then Jesus died for us. Made us like this axe, cleaned us up, gave us a sharp edge again and helped us reflect God. Another place in the Bible, it says when we were still far off, God met us in Jesus. I think that's awesome. So I love my axe. I have spent a lot of time on this axe. But do you know, do you know just how much God loves you? Do you know how much God wants to come along and help clean you up and make you new, give you back your cutting edge, make you work again and just say, look, I want to be with you. God wants you to reflect him to a broken world. Do you know that? My encouragement is to think about it pray about it that means talk to him about it like i'm talking to you now we're not in the same room right now but we can see and hear each other and the same thing is true with god you know he might not feel like he's actually in your space but he is and he can see and hear you so just talk and he'll hear you and ask him to come into your life and clean you up and then ask him to help you reflect him and see what else you can do in this world so there's my few minutes of thoughts today. I hope you have a brilliant week. Please remember um, that it is Shuffle and Shake tomorrow night, 7 p.m. on Zoom. It's redefined on Zoom, 7 p.m. on Sunday. Do keep an eye on ReTV. There is a ridiculous video coming up this week. And keep your eyes out for the summer plans, which we're starting to reveal over this next week. Have a brilliant week, folks. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.